NCAA and its member schools offer nearly half a million college athletes a path to go pro in something other than sports. Learn more at NCAA.org. Just a gorgeous night for soccer here in Corvallis. Sweet 16 action in the men's NCAA soccer tournament. Number one ranked and top seeded Oregon State leading New Hampshire 1-0 as we head into the second half. A quick look at the bracket that affects Oregon State. Earlier tonight, Clemson with a goal in the 89th minute, taking care of Kentucky in a wild one. The final there, 2-1. Clemson awaits the winner of tonight's match between Oregon State and New Hampshire. If the Beavers were to win this match, they would host Clemson next week. Date, time to be determined. But that number one seed is so huge for Oregon State because the Beavers know they keep winning. After a first round bye, they keep hosting all the way up to the College Cup. So a trip to the Elite Eight on the line. Can Oregon State seal the deal after TM scores in the 10th minute? There's a good look at Mo. Or can New Hampshire, a club that can score in clusters and score quickly, come back and keep that road record perfect? We'll soon see, and second half underway. New Hampshire in their road, dark shorts, jerseys, socks, home kits for the Oregon State Beavers. White with the dark numbers. And Mondi wants to press. Remember, this is a New Hampshire club that is very good in transition. Oregon State is a club that never sits on a lead. It is not in their DNA. So they're gonna come looking for more. Here's a good look at Terry Boss. Pac-12 Coach of the Year for the second time in his four year stint here in Corvallis. Pretty impressive. Deep ball to Mondi, chests it, and then turns. Into space, nobody there. Seville will work this near sideline. Nice challenge there by Gibert. And here's Armas. Bright got him. Bright's already been nicked with the yellow. He's going to help Armas up. That's good sportsmanship. Bright, your America East midfielder of the year. He's been very active in this match. You'd expect nothing less. Look out. That weak pass picked. Here comes New Hampshire. Great ball. Oh, and just out of the reach of Minutier. What a great ball. Minutier was making a terrific run. Mayer picks off that lazy pass and just goes flying down that far sideline. Check out this ball. Minutier into space. Unlucky there for New Hampshire. Corner kick, first of the night for the Wildcats. <laughs> Oregon State will get collected defensively. Wow, New Hampshire electric moments ago. Minutier, the transfer out of Presbyterian College, made a great run to get behind the Oregon State defense. 
just wasn't able to find that perfect service. You see how dangerous that long throw-in is. Unlucky there for Moliner. Like the idea. There's a good look at Carlos, one of the many Spaniards on this Oregon State team. We're early in the second half. Oregon State with the goal by team in the 10th minute. Leading New Hampshire 1-0. Oh, Pinkham so dangerous with that throw. Great tackle by Pinkham. Well done. And it looks like Jeff All is down. Still not getting up. Check out number 10. See if we can find out what happened. Might have inadvertently got kneed in the face by Hansen. He's up. Mayer gives him a pat on the back. Both of these teams very, very, very physical. It's a big, physical, tough New Hampshire club. But both of these teams have shown really good sportsmanship. The Wildcats would love to cash in on their size advantage. Nicely played, Hansen. TM whistled for the foul. Quick restart. Minutier really lurking dangerously for New Hampshire near that 18. Here's Kamal. Pinkham wanting to cross. Good Oregon State defense, calm, in pressure. Boy, every 50-50 ball just battled by each club. Pinkham gives Tiam a shove. And a restart quickly by New Hampshire when they got the spot corrected. Pinkham, dangerous ball. Really like that idea. May or not able to climb the ladder. Pinkham puts it right on the head of Mayer. And New Hampshire has been very aggressive to start this second half. 52nd minute. TM's goal in the 10th minute is where we are. Oregon State in a year of first. First ever Pac-12 regular season championship. First time ever garnering the number one spot, first time as, ever as the number one seed in the NCAA tournament, and making it to the Sweet 16. A lot of firsts. Seville. Thank <laughs> you. 
Oregon State hasn't been able to crack through this New Hampshire defense in the attacking third yet in the second half. Great hustle by Pinkham. Menudier. Mm. What a play by Pinkham to keep that ball alive and give Menudier a chance. Terry Boss in his fourth year knocking at the door for an Elite Eight berth in the Sweet 16 for the first time. And a win tonight puts Oregon State in more uncharted territory. But we got a long way to go. And New Hampshire has come out of the gates strong this second half. Good job by Crespo to disrupt. Great step by Lund. Tiam, clever. New Hampshire smartly playing that defensively. New Hampshire showing some great hustle on these 50-50 balls. Mayer and Pinkham in particular. Really good crowd here at Paul Lorenz Field. Kind of quiet to start this second half as New Hampshire has been dictating tempo. Lund on the overlap. Send it right back to Crespo. And the Beavers again content to possess and build from the back. Sobbling, dancing. Chabay gives it up. Good Oregon State defense. And Gerbet, hanging tough after the give up, is able to get it right back. Jeff Alt and Moliner. Sobling wants to cut back. Sobling thinks it should be a corner. Pleading his case. And he'll get his wish. Pretty good 1v1 defense by Kamal, but it's going to result in a corner kick. Now, the corner kicks that Oregon State had in the first half, if I'm not mistaken, every one headed away. Nothing on frame. Little lower line drive service. Sherbet. Let's see if Lund can track it down. He can. Crespo. Deep ball. Interesting ball. Gibert was right there. Nicely played. Kolelat. Fernandez has a word for Menudier, who's hanging around that 18. There's Menudier again, looking for any kind of mistake.
on this near sideline. Gibert is down. Oregon State has had a few players who have been very slow to get up and Gibert is holding a knee. Mm. We'll stop the clock for this one as the training staff will come onto the field. Landing awkwardly on that knee. You can see mm, Gibert get up and it kind of locks on him. So he'll stay down and wait for the training staff and coach boss to take a look. As we get deeper and deeper into the NCAA tournament, Washington in a thriller against Indiana. Consecutive games for the second seeded Huskies where Dylan Tevis has recorded hat tricks. Think about that now. Consecutive tournament games and Tevis recording hat tricks in both of those victories for Washington. So now in the Elite Eight, it'll be the Huskies taking on St. Louis in Seattle next week. Washington and Oregon State treating Pac-12 fans to some incredible matches in the regular season this year. It was Oregon State upsetting then number one Washington in Seattle at the end of October. And then with the Pac-12 regular season championship on the line in the regular season finale right here at Paul Lorenz Field. It was a two all double overtime tie that's all Oregon State needed to clinch its first ever Pac-12 title. Again, great sportsmanship. Gibert slapping hands with Bright and Gael will walk gingerly off the field. The junior who plays so many minutes for Coach Boss. And we'll see what the verdict is for Gibert. Definitely holding that knee. Coming on for Oregon State, number 20, Casper Strait, replacing number three, Gael Gibert. So scrape onto the field for Oregon State. The 6'4 sophomore, another transfer out of Coastal Carolina. Denmark International. Has been one of Boss's consistent subs along with Dante Williams. So scrape will be put into the hot seat. One nothing, Oregon State leading New Hampshire in a game where both defenses have been sublime. 59th minute, Mo Tiem getting behind the New Hampshire defense in the 10th minute, sobbling with a perfect deep ball that Mo ran onto and beat Kolelat with the left foot strike. Since then, New Hampshire has hit the crossbar. And late in the first half, TM was denied a brace on a terrific save by Kolelat. So both teams have had chances, but right now it's TM's goal that looked, looms large. Oh. 
smartly played by Moliner. Putting a body on the Wildcat, which results in the throw for Oregon State. Lund. You see all the defenders swarming for New Hampshire. They're doing a great job 1v1 defensively, but they also throw extra help at the Oregon State ball carriers. Goals very hard to come by tonight. Seville. Another Oregon State player down, away from the ball. Let's see if we can figure out. Sobling, grabbing the small of his back, and he's down. Oregon State has had three, four, five different occasions when their players have been down and very slow to get up. Sobling so critical to this Oregon State Club. You see Tiki slowly getting up and slowly walking off. We're in the 60th minute here at Paul Lorenz Field. And shots, delighted to have all of you with us for this sweet 16 men's NCAA soccer matchup between the top-seeded Oregon State Beavers and the 16th-seeded New Hampshire Wildcats. Oregon State finally getting some area of life. Like the idea. And here comes New Hampshire on the counter. Again, Lund and company playing great team defense. Every ball contested. Every single one. That's Sobling back on the pitch. And here's Jeff Alt. One touch, TM had fallen. Oh, far post, Oregon State kicked off the line. Great defense, that might have been Hanson. Oh, Oregon State, so close to scoring their second goal. A flurry of chances, and New Hampshire's defense rising to the occasion. Wow. Finally, a little buzz in the striking third for Oregon State. Moliner, that line not allowing Oregon State 
to dive too quickly or that offside flag is going to come up. Have to be very careful timing your runs here. Oh my God! Another fallen beaver. All right, let's check out the sequence just moments ago. Crespo. Team had fallen. Here's Moliner. And now watch. Oh my goodness, it was Hansen that stayed home. If not for Bridger Hansen, it's 2 nothing. Oregon State. Kolelat was not in a position to make that save, and Hansen staying home saved the day. A goal there would have really put the Wildcats in a tough spot, but we'll play on. Still one nothing. Ton of time. Anybody's match. Nicely played, Jeff Hall. So G. Bear going off the pitch minutes ago with an injury. Scrape wearing number 20 in his place. He's going to have to be big defensively. Nice tackle, Scrape. Von Nebel battling. Corner kick, Wildcats. <laughs> Big opportunity for the Cats here in the 64th minute. Fernandez punches it out. Saved off the line, again blocked. Blocked again by Oregon State. New Hampshire coming like crazy. Great defense by Oregon State. First the save off the line, then consecutive blocks. On a couple of lasers, New Hampshire getting after it. And the off, offside flag goes up. Ch check this out. A deep ball on that corner. Ball pinged. Fernandez, back heel, not there. Saved off the line. Fernandez getting up, making the save. Blocked. Wow. Fernandez, when he went out to block that shot, initially really exposed himself and the open goal. But Oregon State's defense played it great. Pinkham called for that foul. What a match this has been. A 1-0 score, yeah, but both clubs with some big-time scoring chances. The defenses have been equal to the task. Hansen so calm and cool defensively. Lund goes down, foul against New Hampshire, 66th minute. You just get the feeling the one goal may not be enough. And Oregon State playing with that sense of urgency as New Hampshire just keeps coming. So Dante Williams comes onto the pitch for Crespo. Remember, the Beavers weren't sure about Crespo's availability after he injured that shoulder last weekend against St. John's. Game time decision, Crespo started, now he sits, and Dante Williams onto the pitch. Number 32, Rolio Driftle. 
Gould, also onto the pitch, show one me for New Hampshire. Fallberg as well. There's Crespo, subs out. Gibert went out a while ago with that injury. Hmm, I like the idea. TM wants to turn. TM cuts back. Sobling. Wanted that ball near the spot kick area. Instead, Oregon State will build from the back. 68th minute. Great step by Bright. Dangerous here. Show one me. Show one me. And that's good defense by Scrape. Now, it'll be a corner kick, kick, but Scrape does his job. Remember, this is a guy with 10 goals. But a dangerous corner kick opportunity for the Cats. They almost scored their last corner kick opportunity. Low line drive, headed out of the way, but not cleared. Cleared now. And Oregon State's defense will get organized. Couple of nice moments for Scrape. <laughs> Sophie Ann does a nice job against Gould. Sobling. Again, so tough on the ball. 1v1, man, he's going to beat you most of the time, or at least keep possession. Great job by Lund. And there's the turn. Oregon State. Wow, just outside of the 18, Mondi goes down in a heap and he is slow to get up. Another booking for New Hampshire. Hansen with the yellow. So Mondi coming, no question. Just outside of the 18, no question. Mondi. Your Offensive Player of the Year in the Pac-12. Again, a very, very physical match. Right outside of the 18. Sophie Ann is poised. There's a good shot of Kolelat. 70th minute. Scrape at 6-4, Lund at 6-1, 6-2. The targets for Oregon State. Big moment for Oregon State. Here we go. Sophie Ann, I think, might have been going for something on frame there. Blocked. And here's Moliner. <laughs> Nicely played, Pinkham. Show one me, he's going to leave it. Clever, show one me. Switching points of attack, New Hampshire. 
Deep ball. Here's a good look at Sam Henneberg. Leads this club in minutes played. A real iron man for the Wildcats. Been a two-year starter for Hubbard. Can't get him off the field now. Williams into space for Mondi. Mondi wants to turn and does. Great tackle on that far side. Oregon State keeping in their attacking third. <laughs> Foul's going to go against the Wildcats, and that's Hanenberg. Still a ton of time left in this one. Sold out crowd here at Paul Lorenz Field. Sweet 16 showdown between Oregon State and New Hampshire. Sobling. Armas gives it away. Scrape needs to be careful here. And those back passes better have something on it because New Hampshire is poaching and lurking. Good look at Hubbard in his seventh year. Five straight NCAA tournament berths. Took this club to the round of 16 in 2017. 2017 loss to Indiana. No shame there. The Hoosiers, the eventual runners up that season. Nice job by Moliner. And here comes Sobling. Moliner on this near sideline. All right. Corner for the Beavers. You can see Sobling walking very gingerly. This has been an extremely physical match. Big, strong, physical New Hampshire club. More subs coming in for the Wildcats. Coming on for New Hampshire. Number 32, Rory Odrisco. Number 14, Gustavo Rodriguez. Here's New Hampshire's tournament history again. In 2017, it was a Sweet 16 appearance against Indiana. Seventy-fourth minute. Nicely played, but New Hampshire gets it right back after Molitor playing the good D. Rodriguez, O'Driscoll, onto the pitch for New Hampshire. And here's Seville, looking to thread the needle. Moliner puts the brakes on. New Hampshire fans, and they traveled, wanted a handball there. We're going to play on. I don't think they were on that Patriots team playing, though. It came the hard way. Lund with the good idea. Here's Sobling. 
He wants to cut it back. Instead, Moliner. Tiki gets it right back. Moliner. Through ball. Boy, that was just a perfect centering pass, but New Hampshire's defense steps in. Williams still possessing. Seventy sixth minute. Moliner and the Beavers looking for some magic. Sabling. Boy, that was a quick turn and fire. Cole Lat with the save. Check out how quickly. Tiki is going to turn here. Anywhere but there. As these two teams have been very even in the shot department. Both of these defenses have just been superb. Keepers doing their jobs. TM's goal in the 10th minute giving Oregon State the lead, and that's where we stand here in the 77th minute. Dangerous here. Woo. Boy, and that's when, when you're Fernandez and there is all kinds of humanity just flying in front of you. And you got to stay home if you can. Kamal and Mayer checking back into the Wildcat lineup here in the 78th minute. A team going right up against Shawan Me. Big height differential there, but TM with the hops. Oregon State hustling down to get settled defensively, get organized. Rodriguez will drop it. And here's Pinkham. That long throw in. Blocked. No chance there. There's a good look at Mo Tiem. Sophomore, transfer from Radford. Senegal's finest. And down again. That's gotta be the sixth or seventh beaver that has gone down hard. Check it out. Come on, come on. Oh boy, it's Tim. That was just unfortunate. He and Jeff all going for the same ball. And I'm telling you, these guys, both clubs, 
are going to be feeling it tomorrow. Tim helped to his feet. Listed at 5-6. That's generous. So when Tim went for that 50-50 ball with show on me at 6-3, that tells you something. Mo's going to trot off. That's a good sign. 79th minute. Tim trotting off. Tim with the game's only goal. Number 11, Joel Walker on the order. And here's Joel Walker, crowd favorite, senior out of Colorado Springs, Colorado. Three-year starter until this year, but now comes off the bench and is as good a leader as Terry Boss has ever had. TM on the sideline, working on his knee. <laughs> 79th minute. Oregon State not looking to hang on, looking to score. The Beavers know a goal here. Could put this thing to bed. But they've got to be very careful because of the counter-attacking Wildcats who have been very dangerous on many occasions tonight. Credit to Oregon State's defense. Same with New Hampshire's. Wow. Now it's all about grit, 50-50 balls, challenges, smarts, being brave. We're getting close to do or die time for New Hampshire. 81st minute. But heck, we saw what happened between Clemson and Kentucky today. Game winner in the 89th. There's still a ton of time for Mark Hubbard and his group. When you score 47 goals through the course of the season, you know you could strike at any time. That's what Hubbard is telling his guys. Good more harm than good. New Hampshire trailing one nothing at the half came out very strong to open the second half and they've had some chances. Hansen hawked. Good job by Hansen. Cole Lat. Is a good look at Bridger. A couple of years at Westminster. One year at Salt Lake Community College. And here he is at New Hampshire. New Hampshire dispossesses Oregon State, returning the favor. Crowd, kind of quiet, probably a case of nerves. As you can see, folks watching the scoreboard, looking for that clock to go ever faster if you're a Beaver fan.
And now it's Armas, I believe, holding the small of his back. Certainly, the shove from Mayer. Fouls adding up for both clubs. 14 fouls now on New Hampshire, 10 on Oregon State. Eighty third minute. Coming back on for Oregon State, number twelve, Muhammad Tiam, replacing number eleven, Joe Walker. Tiam back onto the pitch, good sign. Look out. Another Oregon State player down. Scrape with the hard challenge coming from Kamal. Scrape gets up, foul goes against New Hampshire. Scrape coming on for the injured Gael Gibert. And the hot seat to be sure as New Hampshire has come very hard and relentlessly in this second half. So Scrape put in an interesting spot. He's been very, very solid this, thus far. New Hampshire not quitting on any balls, but Oregon State staying collected and organized and able to dispossess. Well played by the Beavers. Switching fields for Lund here in the 85th minute. Oregon State with the giveaway. And here comes Pinkham with that long throw. Clock continues to tick. New Hampshire needs a goal. Okay, Cats got what they wanted, a corner kick. So here in the 86th minute, the Wildcats will come again with the set piece. Sophie Ann with a great job on that header to clear it out of trouble. There's a guy that hangs his hat offensively, but plays the D as well. Jeff all tracking beautifully at 5'10", and heading that one out of danger. We talked about all the hardware that both of these clubs taking home individually. Jeff Almondi, Gerbet, Boss, Player of the Year, Offensive Player of the Year, Freshman of the Year, Coach of the Year for Oregon State. And what Tola, Yannick, Adam, and the entire New Hampshire coaching staff have done to take their respective awards home. This field just packed with superb footballers. Ooh. Boy, and that is an absolute collision that results in the foul that's gonna go against Oregon State. 
and it looks like it was O'Driscoll that got popped. Both players going for the 50-50 ball. Nothing malicious there, but that's what kind of game this has been. Check this out. Mondi getting there a little bit late. Again, good sportsmanship. Both of these clubs, all game. Free kick, 87th minute, New Hampshire. Deep ball. And a break for Oregon State. Goes up, will go the other way. Now the crowd willing this club to victory. Eighty-eighth minute, Mondi charging. Cole Lott was there. Jeff Hall, beautifully done by Moliner. Sobbling, threads the needle. Here's Moliner. Crowd wants a foul. We'll see if Pinkham got there cleanly. Moliner is down. Ooh. Studs up. Pinkham got him pretty good. Inadvertent. And right now, Moliner is trying to show Will Nichols maybe some cleat marks. I don't know but it's going to be a throw for New Hampshire. <laughs> Cats got to hurry. 88th minute. Oregon State. And the yellow card is going to come out on Tiam. His third yellow of the season. Can Oregon State hang on for a trip to the Elite Eight? They've never been in the Sweet 16. And they're coming ever so close to not only winning a Sweet 16 matchup, but more uncharted waters, making it to the Elite Eight. Can New Hampshire pull off the magic and force overtime? Look out. So dangerous here. Oh boy. The Wildcats are not finished yet. Corner kick. Eighty eighth minute. Kolelat had left the Nets. Blocked. Okay, another corner. 89th minute. Oregon State's defense put to the test again. This crowd is into it, and here comes Kolelat. Is he coming? Nope. Far post, look out. Another corner. Keeper Kolelat is just kind of, there he is. Do you want me coming or going? At some point, Hubbard may bring him up. And at 6-2, a good target. Here we go. Oh. That low line drive was a beauty. Great Oregon State defense chasing is Seville and then Tiam. One minute, one one minute left minute to go in regulation. Sophie Ann. Look out, Tiam. Tiam can be, oh, so close to beating Cole Lat. And a break for Oregon State. 
Great job by Tiam. Just Sim coming off his line to deny. 30 seconds left in regulation. Bright. Scrape just chucks it. Twenty seconds left in regulation. Oregon State just wants to clear, just like that. That's going to bring down rain. Crowd is going to count it down. Crowd will tell the story. And Oregon State hangs on for the one nothing victory. What a match between the Beavers and New Hampshire. Two terrific defenses giving it their all. I mean, everything left on the pitch. And Oregon State prevails one nothing. The Beavers are going to the Elite Eight. And that concludes tonight's third round match. Our final score, Oregon State one, New Hampshire zero. What a victory for Oregon State here at Paul Lorenz Field. TM's goal in the 10th minute stands the test of this one. So now it'll be Oregon State taking on Clemson here in Corvallis next week, day and time to be determined. I believe it's either Friday or Saturday, but the top seeded Oregon State Beavers continue to host and continue to roll. What a magical season for Oregon State. So put it in the books. The top seeded and top ranked Oregon State Beavers defeat New Hampshire, one nothing. Magic continues for the Beavers. They move on to the Elite Eight for the first time in program history. For our entire broadcast crew, I'm Ann saying so long from Paul Lorenz Field in Corvallis. Thanks for closing out your holiday weekend with us. Stay safe, stay healthy, and see you down the road. Oregon State wins it, one nothing. Full action. Touchdown! Yes! Partial time. There's the shot. What kind of speed do you have? Catch football in 60 in time on demand. Well, I want to be the best football player that ever lived. We are counting down the greatest of the gridiron. I look at a guy who's done things that nobody in this conference has done. The coaches, the players, the legends. The best pure passer I've ever seen. Download Pac-12 now and watch the latest episode anytime. Things off for the Bruins, and we are underway from the Rose Bowl. Garbers pulls it and keeps. He's dangerous with his legs, but this gets back to the original line of scrimmage. Say, and pipes. And pipes. Did you see his pipes? <laughs> <laughs> Let's not leave the most important thing out as Garbers keeps it himself once again. It sets up third and long. And as we talked about in the open, Quantrez night will line up everywhere and play great. Garbers to pass on third and seven, and the Golden Bears come up shy of the first down. Quantrez Knight leading tackler. Jamison Sheehan, the former Aussie Rules football player, is on to punt things away. As Kyle Phillips tells everyone to stay clear. It certainly will. Questions as to whether or not he'll be coming back after the bonus year last season with the COVID season. Kyle Phillips, the Pac-12's fourth leading receiver with the First catch of the night for the Bruins. He's coming off his third game this season with multiple touchdown catches. They hand the Charbonnet thousand yard back this year. Looks like he got to the line to gain. He needed five. Tonight, Britton Brown from Duke 
leading this rushing attack this year for UCLA. Yeah, he is out. Brown was out last week as well. They were hopeful he could play, but he cannot. DTR rolling, tucking. He'll take it himself, and DTR scampers for the first down. No hurdle there. No excitement on that one. Come on, DTR. Let's go. Saving that for uh, a little bit later. Keep his best tricks in the bag. He'll keep it this time and avoids one tackle. He is stretched out and brought down for a loss. Cal swarming. Out of the pistol on play action. DTR all kinds of time. He fires a strike for a first down. Greg Dulcich, the best receiving tight end in the Pac-12. This guy's just fun to watch. Going to want a little switch route to the outside. Going to work to the outside of the numbers. Put on the brakes. Nice timing by DTR. Good spot right in front of Lumagia Hearns, who had a nice pick of Tanner McKee last week. He gains 23 on um, play. Dulcich's last two games, five catches, 162 yards. He's a tight end, averaging 32 yards per catch his last two times out there. And Charbonnet gets his legs taken out from underneath him for a loss. Keep in mind, this is a Bruins offense over the last couple of games. Last two games, in fact, they've racked up over 1,100 total yards of offense. They've moved the ball at will. DTR eyes downfield, now tucks. Trying to sidestep a man. That was a good decision right there for DTR. That was the same play he threw a pick on last week. DTR retreating, now scrambling, and heaves it out of bounds. Nicholas Barmia from 41 yards out. And Barmia, plenty of leg through the uprights, and the opening drive for the Bruins results in three. Well, the Pac-12's top scoring offense gets three on its opening drive. Romijo from the one. Past the 20, past the 30, down the sideline, and tiptoeing the chalk out of bounds inside of Bruins territory. Nico Romijo took one to the house earlier this year. Nearly broke that one free for six. You talked about it. This guy is electric. He gets all the way to the kicker. Great job fitting that wall right there on the backside by the Cal kickoff team. Kickoff return team and just can't stay in bounds. Garbers with pressure rolling. And he has to just quickly get just past the original line of scrimmage. Caleb Johnson in hot pursuit for the Bruins. They go to the ground game. Christopher Brooks coming off the second highest rushing performance of his career, 131 yards against Stanford. Here comes the pressure. Garbers lobs a rainbow and it's incomplete. Kekoa Crawford was doubled up. Cal has not been a good fourth down team this year. They're last in the conference. They've converted just six times. Garbers lobs it down the sideline. Almost a spectacular catch. Jay Michael Sturdivant with Jay Shaw in tight coverage.
has posted some phenomenal numbers during his time as a Bruin. Fifth all time in passing yards and completions. This ball knocked free. Cameron Good right there helping to make the play. His 36th career start with the deflection. Cam Good 6 4, 240 out of Spring, Texas. They go on the ground. Charbonnet breaks free, a big one. And Zach Charbonnet, the conference's second leading rusher for the first down run inside of Cal Territory. Charbonnet, just a great feel. A little kick play. On the backside guard and front side tackle. Charbonnet gets under his pads. Big physical dude, 220. First down, Bruins. It's a gain of 19. This time they swing it out to Charbonnet. Very good hands. A really, really a total back. Is that Charbonnet? Charbonnet with the carry to set up third down. And now gotten things on track in large part because of this defense. Charbonnet. Charbonnet brought down by the ankles. That was Ruchina again. Tier almost sped up his mechanics like he was under pressure. Really didn't have to. Right there. Akers with the punt. And Remigio lets this find the end zone. Cal's had a hard time moving the ball so far. Seven offensive plays. They've totaled just 15 yards of offense. Robbers under center. Costa Brooks. Brooks is stuck right in the gut. That was Quinton Lake. He turned it over on downs. Garbers now having a tuck. And Garbers races out of bounds. Give to Brooks. Brooks finds a hole and is able to spin forward. A good gain. Picks up nine on first down. Brought down by Cameron Johnson. I love that against this UCLA team showing a boundary pressure, showing a bunch of guys coming from the boundary. They might check out of it. Just a man rush. Barber steps up, swings it out to Brooks. He's got a first down catch and run inside of Bruins territory, up in it by Quantrez Knight, the Bruins' leading tackler. The motion Crawford. Barber's kind of a delayed throw, and it's picked off by Jay Shaw. Shaw bringing it back the other way inside of Cal territory. Garbers, who so rarely throws interceptions, throws it right to the paws of Shaw. And this is what they're counting on. We'll see the pressure coming from Caleb Johnson.